morning church. Good morning. Uh, you're very welcome to Sunday service. I just got a, a lovely message from the AV team saying it's okay to start. Uh, I think it's good to actually give thanks to uh, the people behind the scenes who are always working constantly to make uh, things work and happen. Uh, so I thank the, the AV team, thank the uh, people who are involved, the worship team, the preachers, um, all the technicians uh, that make things happen in every single day. So uh, it reminds us um, that it reminds me that it was, it's actually over a year now, uh, around a year since uh, uh, since lockdown started. So, you know, but they, uh, the people who are working behind, has been constantly working uh, through that. So I uh, just want to be very grateful for the people uh, who make this happen every week. Uh, before we kind of start today, uh, today is communion service. So maybe I give, I give a chance for brothers and sisters who are just probably waking up or starting to uh, turn on their uh, devices to listen to uh, today's sermon um, and, and Sunday service. Uh, I hope that you spend just very quickly get the stuff that you need for today uh, and we'll wait for you. Yeah, so for yeah, whoever needs sir, like if they have sermon notes or if they have anything that they need, get into a kind of a more not comfortable place so you can take uh, take notes, be able to be in a good uh, place, good posture to uh, to worship uh, and to listen to uh, the sermon later, which is great. Um, next is the AGM guys. Uh, we have an AGM on next uh, Saturday at eleven o'clock. Um, so uh, before the AGM, we're, uh, if you're a, a member of uh, the CGCI, uh, please go to the link and vote uh, because we have upcoming uh, uh, nominees for uh, people um, for the next AGM. And uh, if you're a member, you're able to vote. So if you're not, not sure that you ha you're a member or not, please contact your uh, cell group leader or any leaders and then we can check for you. Um, uh, that would be quite an uh, easy process. But Next is AGM. Uh, I hope you can attend. It's on a Saturday at 11. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, the things that's going to happen through the new year. We're going to talk about uh, the new nominees for, uh, 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 for the church. And we'll just talk about the overall plan or, or look back in hindsight to see how much God has done over this past year um, and, and the future ahead, uh, what lies in the future ahead as well. So please Please, um, um, you know, cast your votes uh, and also be able to attend, you know, and uh, and just be able to come together as a big community uh, of of church, uh, so you can so you can enjoy the time together and see how much uh, we have progressed throughout the years and times ahead. In Jesus' name. Uh, next one is just the offering slide. Uh, let's take a moment to uh, to reflect on what we can offer to God. Um, yes, it's been a year. It's been uh, quite a I would say a, a adventurous a new year, a year to uh, to COVID. Uh, hopefully, it is uh, over soon. Uh, I hear good news every day, uh, which is great. You know, it's positive news. And uh, thank you for it. also for the people who are in healthcare who are working constantly every day since uh, since the start of this. Uh, um, all the doctors, all the nurses, everybody who's been involved in trying to make. Um, uh, you know, trying to control and help this pandemic and also the people as well. Pray for our government uh, as they try to plan uh, and how to kind of release the people from uh, from COVID and lockdown and stuff. So hope they do that diligently. Uh, and um, yeah, so let's take a moment to, to, to think about what we can offer back to God um, in this time. Um, and then I'll pray. Father God, I just want to give you thanks and give you praise uh, for all the things you've given us, Lord. Thank you for um, uh, giving us the, the energy to wake up, uh, be able to set our alarms, be able to really have a new day, Father. Uh, I pray, Lord, that um, that you continue to bless us, Lord, uh, especially to, to this day. Uh, Father, I just want to pray for what we can offer, you know, pray for our time, pray for um, any uh, financial things we can give to, up to you, Lord, that you've given all of us, Lord. I pray that this can be a token of our hearts to, to reflect on what we can 
uh, uh, sacrifice to you, uh, little things that we can sacrifice to you, Lord. Uh, thank you for, uh, for all the things you've given us. Uh, we're grateful for uh, the people around us. We're grateful for the things that we have. We're grateful for uh, the church that you provide us, Lord. And uh, thank you, Father, for just, just loving us each day. May Lord that you, you bless the worship. May Lord that you bless the preaching. And may Lord that you bless the entire Sunday service. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. So church, we're going to move on to, uh, uh, to worship. Uh, oh yes, the verse, yes. So today's verse, guys, uh, I'm just going to read uh, Psalm 42. Um, so this is the word of God. Um, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go, when can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to, to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one, with shouts of joy and praise among the fests of Troll. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. From the land of the Jordan, the heights of the Hermon, Hermon and from the Mount uh, Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressing by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. You are, my God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light and your faithful care. Let, let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. And that's the word for today. Uh, let's praise him today with, uh, now with our words uh, and our voices. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, if you haven't turned on your camera, I would actually invite you to maybe turn on your cameras as well. It helps us to focus and, um, you know, uh, helps us focus and get less distractions around us as well because you know that, um, you know, your cameras are on. Um, definitely what um, previously I think we've mentioned before, uh, you know, it gives us a sense of home and it gives us a sense of fellowship and it, it and it feels like we are actually gathering together when we're actually able to see each other's faces as we worship and uh, even listening to um, the word of God um, on Sunday mornings is only once a week and I know some are, I know some people are still a little bit uncomfortable um, to show their faces and I understand um, totally understand as well because um, you know your hair might not be uh, brushed yet <laughs> or <laughs> might not have been dressed yet but that's okay. Um, I think it's just a way for us to focus. So if you're comfortable, um, I, I would invite you to get uncomfortable. Um, and I, it will definitely help um, Elder Tommy as he preaches to us later on this morning. Um, so that he'll be able to see you and that he is actually preaching to people and not just blank screens. I know that, that can be very difficult at times as well. Um, the kids have definitely set a great example on their Saturday morning services. Every child actually has their camera on. Um, it's compulsory, they have to, but it really does um, bring a lot of joy for whomever it is that is doing worship or 
uh, that is preaching um, and for the Sunday school teachers as well so that they know that they're engaged um, so yeah, I just want to invite you if you're not ready this week or if you're not fully dressed yet um, you know I encourage you to do that maybe next week you can wake up 10 minutes earlier <laughs> you can brush your hair uh, get dressed um, yeah so just just a little encouragement I think it'll be really good um, yeah so Actually, this morning um, when we woke up, you know, the sun was so bright and it was just shining through our curtains. Um, yeah, I, I woke up with a bit of a headache, actually. I wasn't feeling the best, but um, Kevin here beside me, he was super excited. He was so awake. He was so full of energy and he was just singing um, yeah, the second he woke up. Um, and I hope that we're able to do that this morning as well. Um, to give thanks that he has given us a new morning, a new day, um, great sunshine, hopefully we can all get some vitamin D later on if you want to go outside for a walk, um, but definitely to kind of waken us up as well and also to get a bit of uh, fresh air, um, but I hope that we're able to uh, worship God this morning and I hope that you can sing along um, wherever it is that you are, um, in your bedroom, in your living room, in your kitchen, um, but I hope you can put all the distractions away and actually just to worship him this morning. So we're going to start this morning, so I um, hope you can sing along. Dear and for the 
my soul runs faster deep. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. you we can worship you this morning and want to be like the dear to uh, really thirst for you Lord Father thirst for your word thirst to be in your presence and to thirst to be with you every single time and every single day Lord Father I pray that you will continue to um, uh, take away the distractions um, that we may have around us Lord and just to put our focus onto you this morning and um, we just really want to uh, Give you thanks, Lord, for um, giving us a church, a community, and um, brothers and sisters, our family and friends, Lord, that we are able to come um, together as a family, as a church, to um, come before you to worship you this morning, Lord. And um, Father, I pray that you continue to be among us this morning, and um, as we continue to uh, sing songs uh, to you, Lord, um, and as we hear of your word as well, Lord. And Father, I just want to give you thanks and I praise you. Lord. Yeah. 
not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Yes, I will run the race till I see. You call me to your purpose as angels understand. For your glory, may you draw them as your love and grace demands. I want to run to you. To your words of truth, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Yes, I will run the race till I see your face. to hand this time to Elder Tommy for um, the word that he's prepared for us today. Morning everyone and thank you uh, Kevin Eva for leading us in worship and also Sabrina and Rachel today on Zoom and a lot of other people. Um, who makes these services happen every week. And of course, I know a lot of people are supporting us in prayer, personally or corporately as well. Um, so thank you. And it is great to be able to share God's word with you again. Um, let us start with a prayer. Let us start with a prayer. Father Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that you've gathered us together, even if it's online, to be able to worship you together. Father Lord, it has been a year now since we've had to go online, uh, in and out of lockdown and on-site and online and on-site again and online again. And it has really affected us. And I can't imagine what it'd be like if it was at other times in the previous centuries or millennia, etc., when people don't have even the technology to communicate to one another, except for by walking or by horses. Father Lord, we thank you that in your grace and mercy, you've allowed only coronavirus to happen now. And even though we're affected by it, but perhaps there's a lesson to be learned. And perhaps it is something that you use to speak to us and those around us. So Father Lord, speak to us today with your word, through your scripture, through your spirit. As we read them, we get to understand what is your mindset. What is your heart? What is your will? For us. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So good morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Let us uh, dig into God's word and I'm delighted to see everyone here and uh, maybe even one or two people who are new or haven't seen for a while. So it's great. Last weekend, um, I, um, I, I, I learned three new words last weekend. Um, let me just share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Um, last weekend, I learned three new words. The three words are anti-maskers, maskers, mask as in mask, face mask, face mask anti-vaccinators and anti-lockdowners that's right so last weekend uh that's the th those are the three words i learned um people who identify themselves as either anti-maskers or anti-vaccinators anti-lockdowners or two of them or three of them and 
and they gathered in Dublin to protest, to protest against the policies of lockdown and level five and, and distancing, social distancing and mask wearing and maybe even vaccinations and so on, thinking that's all a conspiracy theory. Uh, apparently the Brazilian prime minister yesterday or the day before told people in crowds to get over it, stop crying and get over it. Brazil has the second highest number of people with COVID and the second highest number of people of death after the United States. And his message to him as a leader to message to people is um, to get over it. Um, I can tell you it's not easy as a doctor myself. Um, people have been affected. We've all been affected by the pandemic. Schooling, working, traveling, shopping has all been impacted greatly. Um, we probably may know someone who has lost a job or perhaps people who suffer from Zoom fatigue uh, or even physical or mental health issues because of the coronavirus. And the response of some people, as you can see here, is to gather together to protest and in some cases, as of last week, in violence, unfortunately. And COVID has been very difficult for everyone. The distancing, the separation, the isolation, perhaps the depression, are all very real. And we as Christians are not immune to COVID. Neither the direct effects of the virus causing physical illness, respiratory illness, etc., or the effects on our mental health, physical health, personal lives, and the community. But is there a better way? Is there a better way than simply, or not simply, complicatedly, gathering together to protest Violently, I believe there is. And as Christians, as believers in God, I do think there is a better way. The short answer is that we need to persist in worshiping together. And of course, as Christians, we've already referred to this, we have had to worship online for the most part of the last 12 months. Online, I mean, you know, is that, some people even say, is that real worship? Um, you know, are, are we able to really worship when we are doing it from our homes, only connected through wires and, uh, and beams and so on? Um, and is God here? I think so. I think lots of people can testify that they have. It's difficult and it's perhaps not natural and not in the long run, I don't think, the way God would want it. But temporarily, he has allowed it to happen, perhaps to teach us something. And as I mentioned, I can't imagine if, you know, coronavirus, can you imagine if coronavirus happened back in the times of Jesus or the Old Testament. Of course, there were plagues and of course there were leprosy and infectious diseases. And that's why people were outside the camp and in, not inside the camp and unclean and so on, etc. And there are things like that, although that's to do with holiness and not as part of the disease and so on. And I suppose people could gather in very small groups to worship. But one thing for sure, they would definitely be missing one key element of Old Testament um, and even at the time of Jesus. Jewish worship, um, which is at the temple, at synagogues, and at the main temple, with corporate praise and prayer and animal sacrifices. And I know, I know we're not as barbaric, I know, but trust me, as a Chinese, I well know that animal sacrifice is important for worship. Plus, I like to eat the food afterwards. And I suspect that all of those things will be shut down if COVID happened in the times of the Bible. Now, I must be quick to add, and thanks to Deacon Kevin for reading scripture today for us. I know, you know, uh, 11 plus 5, 16 verses can be a bit long, but, but I hope you see the pattern as we'll go through it later. I'll come to it later. Psalm 42 and 43, of course, is not about a psalmist or a, you know, poet uh, or songwriter writing about us and the coronavirus in 2021 or 2020 or 2019, COVID-19, yes. Um, it is about, it is just about him as a writer experiencing some form of isolation, some form of distancing, some form of uh, maybe oppression and, and taunting by people, etc. And it's not about us per se, but if we happen to find ourselves in circumstances similar to them, or at least in, you can draw parallels, then I think that can be applicable. But please remember, it's not actually about the coronavirus. The spiritual state that he was in, one, some people will say, it's like as if he was in a spiritual kind of depression or 
a season of dryness, like being in a desert, and which is probably why he starts the psalm by saying, as the deer, oh, it's the title of this, is Before the King Part 2, I changed it from as the deer. Before the King Part 2, we come before the king. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for you, for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You see, you see the parallels. As I say, you know, we are probably we are in different circumstances from the songwriter, psalmist. But I, I think for some of us, anyway, this is this is probably applicable, true. In the desert, in which a lot of Middle East is, and Palestine and Israel at the time or at least in dry terrain, if not clear-cut desert. And during dry spells, literally dry spells, weather-wise, terrain-wise, geographically, as opposed to soul dry spells, dry spells of our soul. Waters that don't dry up, if there's water running through a stream or a brook or even a body of water that doesn't dry up, is usually known as living water. And it's quite easy to understand why it's called living water. And God here is referred to as living God, also quite easy and makes sense. And throughout the psalm, he will, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily follow one logic per se. He, he get, there's ups and downs, as with lots of psalms, you know, he switches from, you know, he, from, from, and even if we read the refrain, which is like the chorus later, I'll show you, you know, from down and up and up and down and this and that. So that's why it can sometimes be hard to follow exactly what they're thinking, especially if we're not in the same situation as them per se. But that's the nature of a lot of our emotions and what our experiences are. It's up and down and left and right, and it could be all over the place. So look at this. Psalm 42, verse 5. Psalm 42, verse 11, I'll show you. And Psalm 43, which is actually part of Psalm 42 in the original manuscript. Psalm 43, verse 5, are exactly the same because they are what we call refrains in Psalms or choruses in modern day language, you can say they repeat themselves. So why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. Verse 11, exactly the same. Why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Answer, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. As I say, Psalm 43 is actually part of Psalm 42. So at the end of Psalm 43, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my soul and my God. So I suppose the question is, why is he longing for God? Why is his, his, why is he, why is his soul downcast? Why is he disturbed or, we prefer, troubled? And as mentioned, the psalm is, of course, not talking about coronavirus or COVID, and it's not thinking about COVID-19 and not thinking about us per se. But as we find ourselves in a similar isolation situation or oppression situation or being taunted and mocked situation, we can draw legitimate parallels. The author here is specifically actually a belongs to the son of Korah. So a son of Korah means uh, a sub group of priests of the Israelite priests who were in charge of temple worship. So they were actually in charge of like like the worship team you can say were the sons of Korah and um, and you can see in here how in this psalm you this psalm well yeah, you will see how badly he misses going to that temple worship and why that's the case and why it is also for us therefore our hope that we can gather in worship as we come out of lockdown and so on and as much as we say that's, you know, that's, you know, the physical building of the church, we always say that it is, you know, the church is more than just the building. But I think it's equally wrong to say that than to think that, you know, you know, it's not important to meet in a building or a tent or a temple or a stadium or a hotel room to worship. It's important for fellow believers to be able to gather together. And I think it's really important that we do not underestimate the absence of this aspect. Before I go into the verses again, I want to share one story with you. A number of years ago, uh, I was in a meeting or a meetup with other leaders of the church. And there was a new leader who was joining our church leadership. And he was actually initially not from our church. And we all shared about, you know, how we are and 
what we've been up to and going through and what's been happening. And, and also then we started sharing about what our needs were and if there's anything we could pray for each other as you do do towards the end of a meeting. This leader, a bit to my surprise, said that he didn't have any needs whatsoever. Maybe he said many needs, but I think he actually did say he didn't have any needs. And he said the reason is because he has God and that is all he needs. He knows God loves him and he loves God. And I kind of thought maybe somewhat arrogantly or boastfully, he said that he had a very good relationship with God and he has therefore no other needs whatsoever. And I thought to myself, wow, could it be true? Unfortunately, this leader subsequently committed adultery with a sister in our church. Much to the hurt of his wife, his child, the family, and the wider church, those who he was leading, those he was co-leading with. One part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. Not surprisingly, he left the church. His wife decided to stick with him because their child was very young. And the sister, who was a worship leader, left the church also. It is also worth noting, and I know sometimes it's difficult that, you know, we, we, we think about, you know, so temple worship and Israelite worship and Jewish worship and go Old Testament worship is like, is it applicable to me? Like, you know, symbols and trumpets and, um, you know, animal sacrifices and loud corporate prayers, public prayers and etc. Well, as I say, some references, so you can make, do a, like, a, like a hop and a leap, right? So, it, and to try to get to understanding that. But those of us who have some kind of, you know, perhaps Asian background, Chinese or Indian or Japanese and so on, et cetera. And maybe at some stage, at some stage in, you know, Irish culture or something, you know, that actually worship like that was very real. It's still very real in Hong Kong and places like that in Asia, right? Chinese, uh, Chinese New Year has just passed. And Christina asked me a few weeks ago over Chinese New Year, she said, what was my Chinese New Year like when I was a kid? And I told her we used to go to all the different temples around Hong Kong doing a day trip, uh, doing a circle around Hong Kong to try to uh, worship gods, um, different gods in different temples, um, burning incense, uh, yeah, lighting the incense, burning incense, burning paper money, and offering ducks and other delicacies to these gods. But I also remember one thing: those places were just jam packed and noisy and rowdy. Well, actually, I enjoyed it when I was a kid. Um, and as part of festivals and New Year festivives and things like that, etc actually it serves as really important to be able to meet. I mean, we as Christians will be celebrating Easter soon. We do that for Christmas. And a key part, apart from good food and, and prayer, is, is, is worshiping God together in these times, important times of the year. The Psalmist here says that he longs to be in the house of God and to be able to meet with him. He asks, when can I meet you again, the living God? And today we'll look at why is it that he was downcast and maybe we might have certain parallels with some of them. So we'll be looking at three reasons, and of course there may be more, but there are three reasons in this psalm, I can see, as to why he is downcast and why he is therefore uh, composing this and saying that his soul thirsts for God as a deer pants for water. The first one is isolation. So I think we can clearly identify ourselves with this. As I said, the psalm, you know, goes back and forth and, you know, in different places. So, you know, actually you have to pull the verses together to make these, um, these connections. So verse four, Psalm 42, verse four, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. So you see, he's using memory to recall he knows that he is away from God and he was able to, he used to, now not able to, at his whatever circumstances he is. He used to be able to go to the house of God and under the protection of the mighty one, which shouts of joy is not him alone shouting with joy and praise. It's shouts of many people shouting among the festive throng. You see, you can picture that collectiveness, the corporateness, the crowds in praise and joy of the living God. And of course, the house of God would be the central, the main temple in Jerusalem, which is what he says. I mean, he, he's, he, we'll see it later. But at the moment where he is, is you know, verse six, is that 
he's having to having to remember God from afar. Now, you know, it's not as if he's completely forgotten God. It's not as if he thinks that God is not everywhere. He, I'm sure he knows God is everywhere. But to, and we you know, we may say to ourselves, yes, I know God is everywhere, including right here in my house with me. But it's different from being able to, pro wanting to proactively go to meet with him with other believers. As I say, a place of gathering for worship is so important. He will remember him, even though he's from the land of Jordan, which is far away from Jerusalem, east of the river and so on, and the heights of this range, hills range, Hermon and so on. And it's causing him to be downcast. It's causing him to long for God. And that's why he asks, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And he tells himself, I need to put my hope in God. I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. The second one is because of trials, and that includes oppression or, you know, difficulties, and maybe perhaps even things like illness and so on, etc. So different trials that causes us to be downcast or disturbed. So he says in verse 7, he says, deep calls to deep. It's interesting because, you know, at first he talks about living water and water, the deer pants for water, and he's looking for living water, living God. But water can also be flipped around, and this is poetic, to be a sign of trouble, to be a sign of being overwhelmed, and so on. And here he says, deep calls to deep, in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. You see the picture, the poetic picture, how he's swept by the waters, the troubles of life. And so so oppressed by his enemy. So one of the ideas, one of the things is maybe there was civil war at the time of David and so on, etc. And maybe he had gone and he was isolated and had to flee from the capital of Jerusalem, etc. And you know, it's so it's so um intense, right? It's so tangible and intense, it's so um tight that he says, You are God, my stronghold, why have you rejected me? This is not, you know, please don't mistake this as he has no faith. This is his expression of his heart, his soul pouring out. Why is this so difficult? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? God, have you rejected me? And we know Jesus on the cross had also said, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Verse uh, 42, why, verse 9, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Of course, if God had forgotten him and he thinks that he, he has completely forgotten God, he wouldn't speak to God. So it's not the people who question God, whether you are there or not there, who are in the biggest trouble. It's the fact that you don't think about God at all. That's, those are the people in the biggest trouble. He said, why, God, have you forgotten me? Why must I go on about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Again, you see, it's poetic in nature. And you see him pouring his heart out to, 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 because of the situation he is in. So the trials he faced, the oppression he faces are real and tangible, so much so that, you know, he feels momentarily, temporarily. He at times where he thinks that God has forgotten him or has rejected him. And brothers and sisters, you know, I, you know, I think it's not an unhealthy thing to sometimes have those experiences. I'd be very concerned, like the other leader, if you say that you're always good with God, if you're always good with God, I would have a lot of questions, some questions. The final one, oh, and yeah, and because of that, again, he says, my soul, why are you downcast? I disturb, uh, why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, yet I will praise him, my savior and my God. The final reason, and as we go through things like isolation, as we go through things like trials and oppression and, you know, being chased and so on, you know, it's, 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 and especially when we are absent from the corporate worship, from absent from being able to gather and see each other and encourage one another, then the voices of the world really get at you. The voices of the enemy really, really gets at you and, you know, really tries to use that opportunity, leverage it against us. Right? So watch this. Psalm 42. My tears have been my food day and night. My tears, my food has, my, my tears have been my food day and night. 
while people say to me all day long, where is your God? Where is your God? People say to him all day and night as he's crying, where is your God? Verse 10, my bones suffer mortal agony. Like he's, he, he, he actually, you know, is suffering so bad that his bones are suffering. His, that's how he feels, probably in pain, as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? You see, brothers and sisters, as I say, and you know, we, we've talked about this sometimes, you know, here and there and in and, and, and some places. People talk about spiritual warfare or, you know, good versus God versus Satan and so on, etc. And sometimes we get very into it and sometimes we dismiss it. Um, I think that it's constantly there and there are times of intensity, yes, true. And then I think it's it's also times in which you know you know your your tug of war is means that you move and move this way and this way. And but it's true, there's either people for God or people against God. And if people are not for God, they are against God. I mean, there's plenty of scriptures around that. And ultimately, the question that the rest of the world will be, you know, the unbelieving rest of the world will be asking you and me is, where's your God? Where's your God? There's COVID, there's evil, there's, there's injustice, there's poverty, there are illnesses. Um, you're in trouble, you're crying, and you're, you don't seem to be very happy. Where is your God? And brothers and sisters, I, I picked this message because, you know, right in the midst of COVID, one year on from COVID, you know, it's a make and break thing, right? You can either draw closer to God by taking the right actions, or you can fall away. And I think we have already known people who have perhaps been so, who were probably far away from God, or maybe not that far before, and now much further from God, and maybe even now, yeah. I'm sure by God's grace, a lot of them are still within reach, but, but God wants to bring people back to him. The psalmist ends the very, the, the Psalm 43, repeated twice in 42. Why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? But put your hope in God for I will yet praise him my savior and my god isolation trials and taunts are real reasons why we may feel downcast and disturbed are very real reasons why we may feel that it's just too much we are forsaken for you know forgotten uh, uh rejected and so on, and we, you know, it, it really is, is, it's, you know, we should not downplay it at all. But the solution, the 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 work, the the journey towards it is also there. The journey towards restoration is also there. Um, the Lord, He remembers here and there, scattered. You see again, the verses are scattered throughout the Psalms. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. He remembers between all these oppressions and haunts and depression, perhaps, that, that God's love, the Lord's love is, is with him. By day, he directs his love, probably by his teaching and his reminders. By night, his song. And this is how he prays. And this is how he then starts moving towards towards, um, you know, towards the end, so to speak. You know, verse 43, as it's, uh, chapter 43, um, Psalm 43, second half, third half. Um, Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Like there are enemy out there, there are people out there who are not faithful, who are not of your people, and rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. Send me your light and your faithful care, 
let them lead me. But notice where he asks God to bring him. Don't miss this point. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Let them bring me, please bring me, God, to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Bring me to the place where I know you reside and I can worship you. I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre or any other instrument. Oh God, my God. You see, and sometimes we miss this because we are predominantly, most of us millennials or maybe just pre-millennials or post-millennials and certainly brought up and living in a Western society, in, in a very kind of individualistic mindset society where we think that, oh yes, I will go to church and I will worship God. But really, it's not we going there by myself to worship God, or it's not the psalmist who will go to Jerusalem, to the temple to worship God, and he putting up the sacrifice and singing by himself. He's actually looking forward to gathering with other people together. He had already said in the earlier verse, where I missed the part where there were shouts of joy and praise and among the festive throngs. You see, that's what actually corporate worship is about. Corporate worship is so that we can come together as a community to be bigger than isolation and trials and taunts where our soul is downcast and we are disturbed. It is, it is the answer God has provided for us, I believe, to be able to lift us up. Yes, each of us individually need to make a decision, but collectively we make a decision. Yes, individually we tell ourselves, even as this psalm does, my soul, uh, he's talking to himself, right? He's, he's, uh, he's saying, why are you downcast? He's reflecting, and then he's telling himself, I need to get out of this mode. But the bigger answer, the real answer, lies in him looking forward to gathering with other believers in worship together. In being able to, to praise, worship God together. It is not just, you know, he writes this to himself because that's where he is and in isolation and so on, etc. But in the end, it is for him to come before the king of kings and the lord of lords. And I don't have a picture of God, so the queen will do. Uh, as we shared last time, people are excited to see their queen. People want to praise the queen. And our God, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the King of everyone and everywhere for all times, most certainly deserves our gathering together to give him praise and glory, to lift our hands, to, to just delight in him together as a community. That we would be more than joyful. We would be like what I shared last time, Psalm 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, giving him thanks. Um, uh, to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Brothers and sisters, we, we you know, COVID, as I say, it's not been easy. Um, and as a church, it has not been easy. And, and, but God has had a very, his own wisdom and reason for allowing it to happen and has his own reason for or momentarily, temporarily dispersing us in our own homes, perhaps to see our hearts, whether we are really keen to continue to be part of a church and part of being his body of people. We often say the body of Christ and being united and this and that. I wonder sometimes that is we really still, you know, really 
really proactively move towards it. And I know it's a journey, just like this journey here, about how we can gather together, um, even if it's online, to be able to, for ourselves and for those who question us, show that we really are his people. This is, I believe, one of the key elements of the correct posture of worship. To be able to say that, yes, and there are times when we worship alone our God in our quiet time and our meditation time, our, ourselves and God alone, etc. I know that. But I think more often than not, what we need as well is to make that effort to gather together. It's why we say things like, please turn on your video cameras so that we can sense better that we are with together and each other. And why it is that at the moment that, you know, go back to level three or whatever it is, and five kilometer restrictions are, rest are lifted, we can go back to the hall, even if we're distanced there, and run multiple services to run it together. And thank God in Christmas time, we managed to do that. And, and just before I finish and just before we move to commune, let us think particularly, please, of two things. Number one, what we can therefore do to continue to gather together and and I hope you will all stay back in the respective Zoom rooms or even maybe the, the joint platform of the to gather that the gather to gather on site on on the web platform, the app. And the second thing is this. If God has spoken to you today about the importance of gathering people and you know of someone, you know of someone who is at the moment far from him or remote very remote, I know we are all remote, but particularly remote from the body of Christ and the fellowship of the believers, perhaps you may consider directly reaching out to them. Yes, to see how they are. Yes, to show empathy and sympathy. See if there's an opportunity as well to just invite them to some form of gathering of believers, whether that's small groups, whether that's a prayer meeting, whether that's meeting up with a few people bit by bit. And they might feel more comfortable back in the body of believers again. This is my prayer for all of you and all of them and myself as well. This is what I believe God wants us to do. We now move to a time of, of communion. We are, you know, again, when, when, the, when the pastors and elders first discussed about communion and said that, so do we all have communions from our home? Is that, is that, is that even legit? Is that, is that allowed? What does God think about that? Do we go, that's not really a communion because we're not actually in the same room and we all hold our own bread and own cup in our own space. And does that really count as communion? And there's other things as well, like baptism and so on. But I think the consensus from us and from other church leaders around the other churches we know and having chats with them is that Look, this is this is it. And if we have the way to connect from screen, screen time, screen, um, audioly, visually, we can still partake in a communion together. So, brothers and sisters, for all those who are believers in Christ and those who have been baptized, regardless of your background, denomination, and so on, we invite you to join with us in a communion this day, this morning, to remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Um For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So brothers and sisters, we are going to, before we take the cup and bread together, uh, we'll invite Eva and Kevin to lead us with a song. And as they prepare the song, if you haven't got your bread and cup, please do get it quickly. And then, you know, as, the, as they lead in the song, as we get to meditate on the song of being in Christ alone, we just really think about not just us and God, as important as that is, but uh, I mean, you and the God, one and one, you know, but us and God together and God and how we really are part of that community called together to come and proclaim him. Let's do that.
this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the one he came to save. Till on the cross, does Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the depths of Christ. So let us prepare our hearts now and to receive from him the body that is broken for us, represented by the bread, to make us whole. Brothers and sisters, let us take the bread together. And we thank Jesus for dying on the cross for us, his blood poured out for us. The new covenant, his death so that our sins can be washed away, represented by the cup representing his blood. Brothers and sisters, let's take it together. And it's a privilege, it's a privilege to be part of this community. It's a privilege to be able to come together here as one church, different congregations, but one church, one language, but one church, and other little churches around the world and around the city and so on, to know that we are not alone. To be able to look forward to the day we can go to our Jerusalem again and the temple again and to... Okay, no animal sacrifices, but a lot of food maybe. Um, and to be able to worship him together, to be able to sing joyfully with praise together with him. Our soul pants for you, Lord, just as a deer pants for water. So Father Lord, help us, Lord. Continue to carry us, Lord, until the day we can come together again. We praise you. We give you thanks, all because of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing the song again to end before I uh, give the blessing.
Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to stand, to lift up your hand, to receive the thing from God. Even though we are so distanced apart, but we are together before him. God sees our hearts and God sees us. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, his presence, his indwelling in us. Be with each and every single one of us this day, this week, and forever and ever until he returns or we are called home. The Lord bless you. I do hope to see as many of you as possible in our meetup rooms in a few minutes. The Lord bless you.